Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is how I painted my watercolor painting Philadelphia Row Homes, University City. A couple years ago, I went downtown Philadelphia with some family and friends to stay overnight at my nephew's house. My nephew originally purchased, was able to purchase a Philadelphia row home in University City that was quite beat up and uh, not in very good shape. But he eventually made this home so beautiful and he really did work very hard on it and was able to buy the other half of the twin row home. And he now owns both of them and they're both gorgeous homes, several stories tall with big front porches down there in the Philadelphia area. A lot of people sit out on their front porches and talk to neighbors. And I think that's a really nice thing for a neighborhood. Anyway, I decided to paint this scene I took while I was there. And it was an interesting architectural experience, as well as a fun one. I hope you enjoy my video and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I began by laying out some basic perspective lines. I took some two-point perspective down on each side with a straight edge and drew right on my table where a vanishing point would, might be. And then I marked in some of these lines going on across. I also put in some strong vertical lines. Although as you'll see, I had a lot of trouble keeping everything vertical because it kept wanting to lean over. Perspective is a very important thing to be able to use. I don't have a lot of patience with it. Maybe you do, but I've studied it to use it and get my basics down. But if, I find if I use watercolor and pen and ink, I can have a lot more freedom to play around with the lines of perspective and capture things in a less detailed and realistic manner. Basic verticals, basic two-point perspective lines, which was going off to one side toward a vanishing point, and then off on the other side toward a vanishing point. After that, I came right in with some water and began working on the sidewalk out front. I didn't want it just to be gray. I wanted it to be pretty. So I put in some golden colors and a little bit of Crimson. All along this, this sidewalk was a low stone wall. So I begin painting in the low stone wall using some indigo and a little bit of Payne's Gray. And attempting to get the lines of perspective somewhat correct. Next I began painting in some of the architecture. I decided that my painting was a little stiff. So using my hand to block I blocked out some area and squirted it with water so it would run. Then I began on some trees. Even though we're in the city, there's some beautiful tree-lined streets. And the trees add a beautiful stately grace to the buildings and the whole setting. In my photograph, the trees look sort of gray, but maybe had a faint bluish cast to them. So I decided to make them bluish and a little bit pale lavender pink because it was pretty and why not? Then I began on the columns, supporting each of the front porch areas. 
these were supposed to be vertical. And this is my area where I kept going into slants. But I figured if I was going to use ink, I could correct the slants with the pen. There was a faint gold to the sunshine. And that's what I'm showing here with the coloring of the columns. Some of the buildings have a brick facade. Some of them had a painted facade. Some of them had very Victorian gingerbread type colors. And people had taken their own color choices and made some lavender, some turquoise blue, some red, with all the elaborate trim on the porches. It made for quite a festive and colorful scene. Of course, in some areas, I embellished and made colors that I wanted. And I don't see why you can't do that in just about any artwork, unless if you're going for total realism. And I wasn't in this painting. Some of the homes had a small garden out front where they were growing some flowers and some low-lying bushes. So I'm marking them in and trying to get the perspective right on them. Now at this point I am working my way right across the facades of the buildings. I'm pulling out obvious and interesting looking architecture and trying to get the angles right on it. Because if something juts out, then something behind it is going to be blocked. And they would be the obvious things to work with. My drawing was not done in detail. I'm trying to do the painting work in the detail. And it's fun. I really am having a good time with this new challenge. Getting things wet again. I take my brush up. I've dipped it into some yellow ochre paint. And then I proceed to splatter all around the surface of the facades with that paint. Letting it run. Letting some of the paint that I've put down previously run too. What's this for? In my case, I wanted my painting to be on the loose side. I did not want it to be tight. And I did not want to even pretend to be drawing highly accurate architecture and perspective. I wanted to have fun playing around with the color, the movement, the varied architecture, and not worry about making it perspectively perfectly accurate. So I can do things like change colors around and splatter paint around and spray water and go out of the lines if it pleases me to do so, and I'm hoping it'll look good. Obviously, if I wanted a really, really realistic perspective drawing, I would have taken an awful lot more time on it. And many other artists certainly do to a beautiful effect. And I continue to build up the colors to try to tighten the vertical lines at the very least and go between the columns and the dark shadows as it recesses between the columns. Get many of the varied roof lines on of the separate buildings that are all attached by common walls.
And then here and there with the shrubs peeking through from the people who have a little lawn, it's um, in front of some of the houses. This is a slow build up, traveling around the surface of the painting, finding the architecture, blocking it in, and then painting it. In some cases, there are two or three layers of color on the painting areas. But first I have to get it all marked out where it's supposed to be and make sure it looks correct to my eye. The next thing I'm going to do is mark in where my windows are going to be on all the separate hums. I'm using my perspective lines that I laid down previously that I've mostly erased but are still evident to, to the close scrutiny. I'm making vertical slits and vertical rectangles and I'm going to line them up on the perspective lines that I drew in that were going to my vanishing points. This is going to really start to add detail. And then I continue to darken between the columns or the pillars, the things that are holding up the front porch roofs. You can see I'm adding another layer of color to the sidewalk. And then to the porches. To the recesses of the porches, I should say. Adding a little more detail to the stonework of that low stone wall that goes across the front of the painting. Erasing some more of those perspective lines. And I decided to jump in and start doing some of my ink work. I found it works best for me if I do the far distance first. So the background what is furthest away in this painting is the tree line. I'm drawing in some of the fluffy leaves and some branches. And then jumping right up into the foreground to start to delineate the stone wall and the sidewalk up front. I am not using a tight pen stroke. I am using a sprawling, spontaneous type of approach, almost a contour line, continuous line type of approach. Or I follow contours, I embellish a little bit. It is loose. This also gives me freedom to correct my mistakes when I make them. Many years ago when I started to use ink with watercolor. I didn't realize that ink, all ink is not light fast. Since that time, as a professional artist, I have done light tests on just about every product I use. I'll make a swath of the color, I will put it directly into my window of my studio and leave it there for several months or longer and turn it around and look at it and see if it has faded, how much it's faded, and whether it's something that should be worked with ever again. The little ink pen that I'm using is 
very fine lined and I would imagine reasonably priced and the light fastness is wonderful on it. I would recommend you do a light fast test on your colors and on other products that you use. You don't want to give somebody something that's going to fade. And of course, nobody should put a watercolor directly in the sunlight anyway. And yet, if it were to happen, it would be better if it were to happen with a product that's going to stay true to its colors. I am detailing the windows, the columns, the architecture that goes all around each of these separate buildings. I'm outlining the roof. If there's a shadow on the side of a roof, I will make several lines and make it darker and heavier. I am using the ink pen to show many shadowed areas. I'm using it the lightest where light is, is shining on two areas. I'm drawing details in the arches all around the windows and I'm drawing the little cornices and swirlies and <laughs> additions that are put onto the top of the pillars. So I draw them in and then I might shadow under them, I might shadow over them, or I might shadow on the side opposite the uh, sunshine, sunshine side, <laughs> excuse me, the light source side. Have you ever worked like this with watercolor and uh, an ink wash? It really is fun. The color is such a joy to work with. And yet working with something that gives you so much control as a pen, that's a joy too. Here I'm outlining some individual plant leaves because we're in the foreground of the painting. What gets closer gets more details. What gets further away gets less. So if I continue to work my way around the whole painting, all the buildings, all the windows, adding details. I continue to add some more shadows and some more depth of color with my paint and my paintbrush. And where you see me blotting with a paper towel, I am lifting color because I've decided it's a little too bright there. Do you see the red paint I just put into that area? It wasn't in my photograph, but I thought it was an exciting dynamic color to put there. And I picked up on it in a couple other places in the painting. Overall, I think it worked and made it more lively. But I do know many artists who would never put red paint where it didn't belong. And that is just fine too. At this point, I'm going around the painting surface again, glazing and adding more layers of color where things seem to have faded and gotten a little bit dark. Also, working on the front steps and the foreground, some of the walls and some of the bottoms or bases to the pillars. I'm going to make sure I get the architecture right and the perspective right, right up in the front where they matter. I also was looking at the blank sidewalk in the front of the buildings and thinking what could I put there that would look logical and attractive. I have another photograph of some beautiful blue ceramic pots sitting on the front steps of a home filled with blue pansies. 
Now, it was a little late to pull off anything so light colored, but here I'm putting in those blue pots right along the front sidewalk. It's going to take up some space and hopefully ornament and decorate the path a little bit so it's not such a big empty space. What do you think? I have to remember to place a shadow in the form of a horizontal line across each bottom of these pots. The sidewalk out front had some very dominant uh, shadows from the trees growing along the road. So that was the next thing I added to my painting, and I think that really pulled the sidewalks together with the rest of the scene. I am using a mixture of ultramarine blue and a little bit of Quinn magenta. So you do see blue and you do see purple. Some people like to paint their shadows in gray. That's fine too. I'm adding a little more to the background tree and then there's a tree limb that goes across the whole front of the painting. Before I start on that, I am darkening more with my marker pen, the windows and some shadows. I'm doing some accent work here getting toward the end of this painting process and getting more satisfied with how everything looks. Now for the more dominating branches that go across the front of the painting. I've mixed together some burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson. I figure the color is a lot livelier than brown or gray, although I do add some brown and some gray to tone things down a bit. I am painting in the branches that I'm observing from my reference photo. Where the branch is very thin, I'm making it a little paler. And where the branch is thicker, I'm making it darker. And once I have it painted on, I decide I don't like it. So I do some lifting. And you'll see that coming soon, too. Right in this area, right in the center, it was too dark. It didn't tie together with the rest of the painting. So I lifted a big section of it. I could always add it back if I needed to. Doing some accent work here at the very end. And then I go in to the dry tree area branch and do some outlining. I'm outlining the sections that I lifted the color from and treating them just like there is color. Playing around with the branches and where they intersect and make different geometric shapes and come together. 
I'm outlining there too. Overall, that branch ends up looking more loose and more designy in part of the rest of the painting. At that point, I do get the painting signed and it's done. I hope you enjoy my video of how I painted Philadelphia Row Homes, University City. One of the things that keeps my art exciting to me is trying new approaches and new subject matters. I have not done a whole lot of particularly complicated perspective scenes or cityscape work. Since I have this photograph that looked challenging with a lot of little architectural detail, I decided to try it. I used perspective, I used different colors, I had a lot of fun, and the ink pulled everything together in the end to my eye. There's some links below I'd like it if you check out. I'd like it if you'd subscribe and click a thumbs up if you like it. And I hope I'll see you next painting.